<laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh, um, Martin? So what do you do when you're face-to-face -face with a venomous rattlesnake with three centimeter fangs that can strike in the blink of an eye and is attracted to movement? Don't move, bro. See ya! <sighs> Whew! Now that was a close-up look at one awesome snake. Oh, <laughs> you can say that again. How about that rattle? It's made of special loose scales that rub up against each other to make that rattling sound. And it's that rattle that makes the rattlesnake the most polite snake. Polite? How is a rattlesnake polite? Well, he always rattles you a friendly warning before he strikes and sinks his venom-injecting fangs into your arm. <laughs> or your face. And you know, when I was face to face with this guy, I had a real close look at how his face is packed with incredible sensory powers. Sharp eyes that can see well in the daylight. Nostrils that have a good sense of smell. And a tongue that flicks in and out, tasting the air, making that good sense of smell great. Plus, there's another sense that, huh? What was that? Oh, he seems to know and wants to get closer to it. But if we can't see it, how can he? <gasps> he must be using the other sensory organ, those pits right under his nostrils. Those pits that sense the body heat of animals. Those pits that give the rattlesnake the ability to see heat and find his prey. Like a ground squirrel. Ha, he knew that's what it was because a rattlesnake can see heat. And so can we with our heat vision goggles. Nice. Turning on. Hi, Chris, do you see me? Oh yeah, Martin, you're waving? Okay, then now what am I doing? You just jumped into a ninja pose. <laughs> okay, my turn. Turning on. Huh? Oops, I think I have these goggles on upside down. Nope, they're on right. I'm doing a handstand. Now what am I doing? You're walking like an Egyptian. <laughs> you got it. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> yeah! Oh, <laughs> yeah! Hey, look. <gasps> They went in there. I know. Let's get around to underground the way a rattlesnake does, by going through the ground squirrel tunnels. We don't even have to dig. I bet those tunnels will lead us right to some tellurium somewhere down there. We can see with our heat vision goggles. Miniaturization, anyone? Whoa. find out which are sharper, yeah, cactus spines or mountain lion claws. Oh, hi, Spotted Skunk. Sorry we bumped into your home. And even more sorry, we brought her. Ooh, the skunk foot stop warning. He's tiny, but tough. A one kilogram creature telling a 50 kilogram wildcat to back off. Now that's impressive. A handstand? Hey, nothing like a little gymnastics to ease a tense situation. Anything but. He's puffed up to look bigger and tougher, showing the warning black and white colors. He's saying, last chance before I... Ooh, skunked! That was a direct hit! From three and a half meters away. What aim? What precision? And that mountain lion is not happy. He's out of here! Skunk stink defense, it's genius. Whoa, that's bad. <laughs> like, let's get out of here, bad. Quick! <laughs> we owe you one, buddy. <laughs> Yuck. Ew. <laughs> uh, we're almost back to my house. Yeah, he's heading for the shade under your porch. Whoa. Hold on. Another heel monster, 12 o'clock. Look out, both are males. When they meet, I think we're gonna have a rarely seen before creature moment. A, a heel monster, monster battle. Heel monsters may be slow, but when they strike, they never let go. 
These are one of the heaviest lizards in North America, and they are throwing their weight around. This makes it easy. I'm gonna name him Lockjaw, because when he bites, he locks on. But which one's Lockjaw? He's the one that lives under my house, and he's awesome. Whoa, he got a hold, and he got a hold. They both got a hold. Wow, he love bite. Okay, now this is some power that can easily take on Zackbots. Powerful bites and tough beaded skin to protect from bites. Add those muscular limbs, impressive claws. Which give the Gila Monster his fantastic digging powers. This is exactly the kind of information I need in order to make my Gila Monster power suits. Oh, yeah. OK, today it's a tie. This is springtime, and Lockjaw and the other Gila Monsters are most concerned with filling up their bellies. Hey, Aviva, thanks for getting started on those Gila Monster power. Oh, oh, oh. And don't forget, Gila Monsters have bumpy scales. Oh, oh. It's going to be fun to try those suits out. Uh, fun, we'll have to wait. We forgot to mention we've got a creature crisis. While you've been observing this Gila Monster, Zach's been collecting others all over the Sonoran Desert, and we're not sure what he's up to. I've got some good observations to start with, but I need my inventing equipment pronto. Jimmy, can you bring the Tortuga over to Javier's house? Sure thing. Great. I'm on it. Hey, Aviva, when you're programming the creature powers, don't forget about tremendous bite strength and scales like round beads. A powerful strike. Warning colors. Oh, Venom. I've got it. I've got it. Look, the Gila Monster's going back to my house. Hey, how'd you guys do that? He really likes the Gila Monster now. How'd you change his mind? It wasn't us. It was the coolness of the Gila Monster. And as the day gets hotter, the Gila Monster has to find a cool place to rest. He's got that scaly skin to keep the moisture in, but even this lizard can't stand the intense heat of the high desert sun. That's why he likes it under my porch. Yeah, but what does Zack like about Gila Monsters? Okay, now this cold-blooded lizard is the height of creature cool. There's no way we can let Zack collect them. And we've got to rescue the ones he's already caught. But what could Zack be up to? <laughs> Walk much, bro? <laughs> I tripped. Tripped? Over sand? No, over something in the sand. <gasps> Gila, Gila monster, monster eggs! Cool! I have Gila monster eggs under my porch? And there aren't many Gila monsters left. Every egg, every Gila monster is precious. We've got to stop Zack and return the Gila monsters back, living free and in the wild. Koki, Javier, you guys stay here and protect Logjaw and the eggs so Zack can't get them. Got it. If Zack tries to mess with the Gila monsters, hmm, I'll bite him. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go rescue the others, real size. 2,356. Ow. 2,357. Uh, we gotta stop running into you like this. <laughs> oh, great. Now we find out you like to sit on people's heads. Would have been a lot less painful if we'd known that before. Ow. At least now we can get a good look at this little elf owl's features. Like those eyes. They're huge. That's right. I'm checking out the scan you got. And according to my analysis, owls have eyes that are up to 100 times better at seeing in the dark than ours are. Yeah, and even though they can't move them around like we can, they can turn their heads completely backward, like, <laughs> ow, like we can't do. Oh, oh. That's how it's done. Great, that's owl sensory power number one, eyesight. Now let's check out that hearing. We need owl-powered ears. Elvis here can show us that too. Elvis? Like the famous singer? No, Elvis. Elvis the Elf Owl. That's what I'm naming him. Stop, hold ah! everything. Huh? Ow! Missed one. What's up, Aviva? I just realized Koki and Jimmy aren't back yet. They're super late. Well, just call them. I did, no answer. Oh, Koki's the communication queen. She wouldn't be late without calling. What if something went wrong? Yeah. Okay, well, just keep trying to reach them. We'll put the Elf Owl adventure on hold and be right there. Sorry, Elphys. Emergency. We'll catch up with you later. Uh, I love 
taking a nap outside on the first warm day of spring. and dandelions and fluffy cute little baby animals. Is that what you want your name to be? Dandelion? <laughs> Dandelion it is. Hello everyone. Hope you're enjoying this gorgeous spring day. And guess what? I've been inspired by something wonderful and I'm going to make a new creature power suit. <gasps> what? Ooh. Really? A new creature power suit? Okay, so what creature powers do you have in mind, Aviva? Yeah, where is this super-powered mystery creature? Uh, he's right in front of you. Huh? Hmm, oh, you. You mean a groundhog? And groundhog powers? I mean, he is impossibly cute. But besides cutting a really nice lawn, what kind of super cool power does a groundhog have? What are you talking about? He's perfect. Don't get us wrong, we love groundhogs. I'm just not sure if a groundhog is a creature that really inspires a creature power suit. Well, I'm sure groundhogs have some hidden superpower that is so amazing. Don't you have an amazing superpower? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, we could try. I mean, Aviva is really into groundhogs. Yeah, and who knows, maybe, possibly, somehow, there's some cool ability to make a groundhog power suit. <gasps> that must be Dandelion's mom. Okay, let's get creature adventuring. Weight, four kilograms. Body temperature, 37 degrees. Just like us. Heartbeat, 90 beats per minute. And she eats and eats and eats. <laughs> Groundhogs eat so much grass each day, enough to fill up a sink. But I don't think that's a talent that makes for a good creature power suit. Huh? Okay, hey. thanks, Chris. Those groundhog basics are just what I need to get a groundhog power suit started. Have a nice breakfast, dandelion. I'll be back soon. Ah, it is really cool how a groundhog digs a burrow into a field and then grazes out from the burrow entrance. A groundhog rarely eats grass more than three and a half meters from its burrow. So, whenever she senses a predator, she can quickly escape to the safety of her burrow. The burrow! Ha! Hey, that's something. Groundhogs are great diggers. See, the burrow is usually dug under a pile of rocks or tree roots. There's a drop down right after the entrance, then a long tunnel that opens up to a chamber. There can also be a special hibernation chamber and then other escape entrances and exits. And a groundhog does all that digging herself. I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> okay, we must be under at least 20 centimeters of snow down here. I got blankets. Yeah, gotta bundle up. Listen, Roland, you gotta get out of this deep freeze. Yeah, you can come back to the Tortuga, it's warm there, and we'll help you figure out how to get wherever you're going. Whew, a little warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is kind of warm, but there's snow all around us. It should be freezing. <gasps> I'm burning up! <gasps> what? It's warmer down here than it was up there. Warm gear off! <sighs> that, that's better. Woo. Yeah, but what's with the warmth down here? What's with the voles down here? Whoa, it's a whole colony of them living in a snow cave. Huh. Martin, do you realize where we are? Do you realize where we are? The, the Submidian zone. zone. A secret creature world under the snow, where it's warmer than up above. Because the snow is like a giant blanket holding in the Earth's heat. So even if it's super cold, like 50 degrees below zero up there, under the snow, it stays much warmer, right around zero degrees all the time. Cozy, right, Rolo? Wait, Rolo, wait for us! Whoa, whoa! 
Sorry, buddy. Watch the bull traffic, bro. Is that what you call rest and relaxation? Yep. Rest and relaxation doesn't involve running around like crazy. I thought you wanted to rest on a beach. I do, and I'm an engineer, so I'm going to bring the beach to me with this. Ta-da! The Insta Beach heat amplifier. Did someone say beach? See, the solar panels collect the sun's rays, amplify the heat, and make a beam of warm weather. It's an instant beach vacation. I'll get the sand. If those crap brothers want to be late, we'll just start our vacation without them. Where is she going? Who knows? Uh -uh. Coming through. Hey, I'm driving here. Left side. Look out! Whoa! Whoa. Whew, made it. Oh, that's the end of the line. Hey, what's she up to now? Hey, watch where you're going, pal. Chris? Chris! Rolo, you're a mama. Oh, those babies are so cute. Well, except that one. Hey, shh, they're sleeping. Creature pod ringers off. We don't want to wake these guys up. Ringer off. Oh, bath before bed? Good idea. I can't believe it. Babies under the snow while it's still winter time? Most animals wait until spring to have their babies. But because of the cozy Subnivian zone, foals can keep having babies even in the winter. That's the power of the Subnivian zone. And the voles sure know how to use it. Whoa! What? Whoa! Oof. Aw, no fair. <laughs> they also know who's a baby vole and who's not. <laughs>